Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to share with you my top five chiclet authors. Might be a bit longer than usual, so um, grab yourself a coffee or a tea, whatever your preference. Um, just pop me on in the background. So today I wanted to share with you my ultimate chiclet authors. I guess you could also call it my auto buy authors. These are the five authors that I feel you can't really go wrong with. Whatever they bring out, I will buy. They're those authors that I can't really get enough of. You get the gist. Now, you'll know if you've watched my videos before that actually I don't keep any of the books that I've read. I tend to pass them on to people or I will take them to a charity shop. So I'll just pop a picture in here for you. You may have heard me say this in another video, but the geek that I am has been keeping a written book review journal since 2008. So we're talking 12 years now. Let's not get started on how recent 2008 sounds. <laughs> um, clearly not. Um, so yeah, I have all of the books that I have read written down over the past 12 years, which was actually really handy for this video. Um, and there are so many chick lit books in there. Let's chat ultimate chiclet authors. Number one, these are in no order by the way. Um, I would rank them all, no, that's a lie. I'm probably putting my two favourites at the end. I'm not quite sure why I've done that, that's just the way that when I was prepping it in my notes, that's the way, that's the way it happened. Um, so first up is Lindsay Kelk. She is a British author and she's probably most known for the I Heart series. So I Heart New York, I Heart Paris, I Heart Hollywood, I Heart Christmas. Now the story is based around Angela and the various countries and cities that she finds herself in. I would say that the I Heart series are all quite aspirational in terms of their setting. So it could be that Angela finds herself on a press trip to Hawaii who doesn't? A girl's weekend in Vegas or an assignment that takes her to Hollywood to interview a really hot actor. So you get the vibe. I wouldn't necessarily call it armchair travel because it's less about the locations that she goes to and more about Angela's life and her love life. But it is really nice within that series to have a backdrop of somewhere different each time. My book review journal that I've been keeping since 2008 has been so helpful for this video because it's allowed me to sort of look back and count the number of books that I have read from this author. I have read 11 of Lindsay Kelk's books and all of them got a score of eight or above. You'll see that that's a theme in this video. I don't think I've put anything in there that scores below that. Oh, there might be one exception, which will be coming later. Now, my favourite book, which I think was also mentioned in my video, um, Best Books to Escape With, I'll leave that linked below. But my favourite Lindsay Kelp book is One in a Million. So it isn't actually part of the I Heart series, although I loved those. In my mind they tend to sort of blend into one and I can't distinguish one from the other but one in a million is definitely one that stands out for me. It's about Annie who takes on a bet to make a hot, they've always got to be hot haven't they, a hot historian famous on social media in 30 days. I would say pick up a Lindsay Kelk book if you want something funny, if you want something feel good and you want relatable characters with flaws. So number two on my top five chiclet authors is Paige Toon and she is the highest rated author on Goodreads out of all of the five that I am talking about today. In my mind Paige Toon and Lindsay Kelk books are quite similar. Um, they both have a lot of books that are set in different countries, in different cities around the world. The main difference is I see Paige Toon as an author for slightly younger people versus Lindsay Kelp for someone who's maybe in their mid thirties. I don't know if that's because I perceive the characters in Paige Toon's book to be younger, or whether that's just what I've got in my mind. <laughs> So Paige Toon is the author that I have read most of. I've read 12 of her books and one, I mean, this hasn't happened recently, one even gets a perfect 10 out of 10. More about that in a second. Again, with Paige Toon books, you follow a lot of the characters throughout a number of her books. So if you're someone who quite likes to get to know a character, stick with them, Paige Toon and of course, Lindsay Kelk, her I Heart series are probably two really good authors for you. There is one exception with Page Two, and I have to put it out there. Um, I think it's a blip. It must be because all of the other books that I have read from this author have been brilliant. The only one that didn't float my boat was If You Could Go Anywhere. Now, 
The perfect 10 out of 10 book for me was One Perfect Summer. So the story is about Alice. She is 18 when we first meet her. She meets a guy on holiday and basically never forgets about him. Despite getting married, despite moving on with her life, he always remains in her mind. He actually becomes a famous actor. <laughs> of course he does. Um, and later down the line, their lives cross again. No spoilers. I never do in any of my book reviews, any of my videos, spoiler free here on this channel. Um, but like I said, I would just call this perfect chiclet. So if you're looking for a page tune book and you've never read any of her stuff before, definitely try One Perfect Summer. It's very romantic. It shines a spotlight on first love and how hard it can be to let go of that. Next up is Lucy Diamond. So another British author and actually an author that I came to quite late, I guess you could say. I didn't read one of her books until... 2012 I think it was so I came to this author quite late but once I'd read that first book I think I binged the others I've read eight of Lucy Diamond's books and I think I have another couple on my shelf again all of them score eight out of ten or above the ones I love most are The Beach Cafe which is a story that centers around Evie who inherits her aunt's beach cafe in Cornwall I mean what a dream and it basically just follows her story and trying to make that beach cafe a success. I mean, that's a very broad summary of the book. It's a very idealistic setting, but that made me feel very sort of calm and very comforted. And I guess that's what I look for in Chiclet and that's quite often what it delivers, which is why it's probably my number one genre. No, it is my number one genre. And the other book that I can thoroughly recommend from Lucy Diamond is The House of New Beginnings. And again, I think I included this in my best books to escape with video back in March, April, whenever that was. So this is about three women who live in a house on Brighton seafront. They each have their own issues, but they become friends and then they basically help one another to move on with their lives. It's very feel good, it's very heartwarming, um, it's obviously a lovely tale of friendship. Now Lucy Diamond books aren't all fluffy, um, but they are all done in a very light-hearted way, unlike one of the authors that I'm going to be talking about in a minute. Lucy Diamond will touch on more sensitive topics such as affairs, adoption, but she does it in such a sensitive, light-hearted way. Okay, number four on my top five chiclet authors. Now, <laughs> I wasn't sure whether to put this in here, and to be honest, I didn't have this author in this list because in my mind, she's not typically chiclet. When I looked her up on Goodreads, it listed chiclet as one of the genres that she writes. So I'm going with it because I would say my current favorite author is Leanne Moriarty. Now she is an Australian author. I haven't read as many of her books as I have the others in this list, but I would say they are probably the books that have had the most effect on me. Those books that I remember the most. And like I said, I would say she is probably my go-to author at the moment. Leanne Moriarty seems to just have hit the nail on the head with what I'm looking for in a book. I've read five of Leanne Moriarty's books but I have read them all very recently so I have basically binged them. Like I was just saying with Lucy Diamond who approaches sensitive subjects in a very light-hearted way, Leanne Moriarty's books aren't necessarily so light-hearted. My two favourite books which I'll talk about in a second I would say aren't primarily chiclet which was why I was so umming and ahhing about whether to put her in this list. Um, I would say they were more light-hearted psychological thrillers. Can you have one of those? Within each of the books that I have read from her and like I said there were five I would say all of them have something a bit gritty, something that you can really get your teeth into. Whether that be adultery, murder, kidnapping. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? Can you can you understand why I thought, I'm not sure whether Leanne Moriarty fits within this genre, but Goodreads says so, so it's going in. My favourite books from Leanne Moriarty are probably Nine Perfect Strangers, which I have done a full book review of, which I will link in the description below, and also Big Little Lies. Um, I also absolutely loved that TV series. And if you did too, and you've also read Nine Perfect Strangers, you'll be so pleased to know, if you're anything like me, you'll be so pleased to know that Hulu have picked up Nine Perfect Strangers to make into an eight-part series, which I believe is coming next year. 
Um, it also stars Nicole Kidman. I think we're in for another treat. And finally on my top five chiclet authors list is Karen Swan. Karen Swan, for me, is the queen of festive fiction. And as we're now in September and autumn is coming and cozy evenings, Karen Swan is going to come into her own. Obviously, Karen Swan hasn't only done festive books. She has done some amazing, more sort of summery books. I think The Rome Affair, The Greek Escape, both are books I could highly recommend. But in my mind, like I was saying about Page Tune and how I feel she is for younger readers, I feel that Karen Swan, for me, is a festive writer. She nails it every single time. I have read 10 of Karen Swan's books. Um, like I said, a couple of them have been more summary based, um, but the other ones are very much wintry, cozy, festive fiction. My favourite two books from Karen Swan are The Perfect Present or Christmas at Tiffany's. The latter, I guess you could call a little bit far-fetched. Christmas at Tiffany's is based around the main character, Cassie, who discovers that her best friend has a child with her husband. Whoa. So she decides to leave Scotland, I think I probably would too, and she heads to visit each of her best friends, who happen to live in New York, Paris and London. I mean, how convenient, but also how amazing. The Perfect Present is very different. So um, this is about a jewellery designer, Laura, who has been commissioned by Rob to make a charm necklace for his wife Kat's birthday. Now, in interviewing seven important people in Kat's life, that's really hard to say, um, she uncovers a truth about Kat. So, as you can tell, two very different stories. Like I said, I have a couple of Karen Swan books on my bookshelf that I haven't yet read. That's because in the past, I would only allow myself to start reading festive fiction from the beginning of December. Since being part of BookTube, I've realized that actually I'm quite a slow reader compared to so many other people. So I can't actually read that many festive fiction books each year if I only allow myself a month. So this year, I am gonna be allowing myself two months. I'm doubling that time. Um, and hopefully I'll get through a few more. I'm gonna be doing a festive TBR video, which will be coming up probably October, November time, um, of all the festive reads that I'm gonna to try to read this year. And I'm also planning to do a video on my favorite festive authors. So if you're keen to see either of those videos and you haven't already, please subscribe, press the bell and you'll be notified when I next upload a video. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it the thumbs up below. Take care, have a good week and I hope to see you again back here on Sunday where I will have another video for you. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.